Now that you know about Ka, the equilibrium constant for acid strength against water, this can be used to determine the acid-base reaction equilibrium constant when the base is not water. Let's go back to our earlier reaction where acetic acid is reacting with cyanide to make acetate and hydrocyanic acid. All of these are aqueous materials, so the equilibrium expression is going to be products divided by reactants all raised to the first power. And we know that if the equilibrium constant is large, we should leave the room because hydrocyanic acid is very dangerous for us. And if K is less than 1, we will be safe. And I told you when we finish with Ka, you'll know the answer to this question. So let's look at the equilibrium expression for this reaction. It is products divided by reactants, or the acetate times the hydrocyanic acid over acetic acid and the cyanide ion. I'm going to do a little math trick. Since they're in the same container, I'm going to multiply them by the hydronium concentration divided by the hydronium concentration. That is, of course, like multiplying by 1. Now what I'm going to do is do a little bit of grouping. I'm going to group the acetate and the hydronium concentration together. This turns out to be equal to the Ka expression of the strength of acetic acid relative to water. I'm now going to group the hydrocyanic acid and hydronium expression together. This turns out to be 1 divided by the Ka of hydrocyanic acid strength versus water. So if I knew those two numeric values, I could use them to find out the equilibrium constant of this reaction. Now here's the piece that annoys students. I started off my equilibrium expression correctly. Products divided by reactants. Because of the definition of what Ka is, for an acid-base reaction, K reaction is going to be equal to Ka of the reacting acid divided by Ka of the produced acid. That seems upside down to you. It isn't. It is correctly derived. So here is just a slide showing you the two Ka expressions and the substitutions that I've used. And now here's a cutout of our acid base table. The Ka of acetic acid versus water is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And for hydrocyanic acid versus water, it is 4 times 10 to the minus 10. So now let me substitute those values. I take the Ka of the reacting acid over the Ka of the produced acid, so positions 1 and 4 on my reaction table. I substitute in the numeric values, and I get 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. What does that mean? That means this reaction goes pretty extensively toward the right side. So we're going to make a lot of hydrocyanic acid, so it is definitely time to leave the room. We have a convention for acid-base reactions. If the equilibrium constant is greater than 1,000, typically we use a single arrow in the reaction. And if the equilibrium constant is less than 1,000, we should use double-sided arrows to say eh, a little bit each way. And it never comes out equal to a thousand, as far as I've ever seen. So here is another question I posed to you in an earlier lecture. What if I gave you amphiprotic species? How would you know which one reacts as the acid and which one reacts as the base? Because these could be reversed. And I told you when we finish with Ka, you'll know. Here's how we work this. For the top one, let's pretend that hydrogen carbonate is my acid and hydrogen phosphate is my base. So as you know, the acid loses a proton to become carbonate and the base gains a proton to become dihydrogen phosphate. 
So now I need to look up the Ka of hydrogen carbonate, which is my reacting acid, and the Ka of dihydrogen phosphate, which is my produced acid. Now, a little bit of instruction regarding some dangers of using the table. Hydrogen carbonate is two places on the table. Dihydrogen phosphate is also two places on the table. But we want to know the Ka for them reacting as an acid. So I always think of a horse that has blinders on. Put on your right eye blinder. Take the Ka values where they are found next to the material when it's on the acid side of the list. So my values are 4.7 times 10 to the minus 11 and 6.2 times 10 to the minus 18. So you notice I have substituted these values and done the math. My equilibrium constant for this acid-base reaction is 7.6 times 10 to the minus 4. So that's not terribly good, but let's see how it comes out the other way. Let's try the other scenario where hydrogen phosphate is our acid and hydrogen carbonate is our base. Let's complete the reaction, of course, the acid loses a proton to become phosphate, and the base gets protonated to become carbonic acid. So we're going to do the Ka of the reacting acid, which is hydrogen phosphate, over the Ka of the produced acid, which is carbonic acid. So let's go find those on the table. So as before, hydrogen phosphate lives two places on this table. But put on your right eye blinder and just use this value next to the hydrogen phosphate of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 13. Carbonic acid is in only one position, and the value we'll use is 4.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So here are our values placed in our calculation for our equilibrium constant for this reaction. And you notice it comes out to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 6. So even though it's not terribly good, the top one is the better reaction, where hydrogen carbonate is the acid and hydrogen phosphate is the base. Another way to figure this out is to look at the position of the materials on the table. I've circled hydrogen carbonate and hydrogen phosphate on both sides of the table. Hydrogen carbonate is the stronger acid because it's higher up on the left side, and hydrogen phosphate is the stronger base because it's lower down on the right side. So those assignments make sense. But if you're not sure how to do it, but if you're not sure of your results using the table, you can always do the calculation.